Welcome to another exciting episode of The Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. And it is Saturday Bolo. We tell you the highlights of sales over the last week on eBay with a bit of a deep dive into them. And why don't you start diving, Mr. Right. Magazine? Well, believe it or not, we originally listed this on Amazon. It's a video game superstars Resident Evil 2 Platinum Tyrant and Mr. K figure set. Put on Amazon. It was listed incorrectly for eighty bucks, and we had to refund the money because it wasn't. It was the right right um, skew, but the wrong figure. Or oh, something okay, like that. right. So we put on eBay, and we got one hundred five bucks out of it. So I guess. Uh, so once in a while, the old toys a, are better on <laughs> eBay some, than Amazon, which yeah, isn't yeah. that often. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Nice. All right. Yeah. And how many Resident Evil? Sorry, how many Resident Evil toys did they make? Did oh. they make a lot of those? Or uh, not a lot, but there's you know different versions, different movies. You know there's cartoons all kinds of stuff 1998 so, so they're, they're out there but you know and again it's one of those things where if you find the figure loose and you know it's resident evil i would buy it for five ten bucks or even more maybe especially wow. if it's complete all right next up disney's mcdonald's official 101 dalmatians happy meal collector set certificate what I, I don't know where you would get this, but I've had it for a couple of years, and it finally sold. I think I took 120 bucks on it. Well, oh, it has all it, the it's figures. It's a box set. It's got everything, but I don't know. Oh, okay. if, I don't know if McDonald's actually sold this, or if you work there, or you can get this. Or, but uh, I thought it was cool. I don't know what I paid. It was a you know a few years ago. So, but uh, okay, that can I say that's kind of a shitty, uh, sh- <laughs> not good. Crap, Oops. Yeah, it is crappy. Yep. <laughs> Picture to start with. Yeah. Uh, I, I quit it, just well, before I said you, it. You see a, a box with a certificate. Yeah, that's yeah. why I said, what the? Because and I thought you were just selling that box with a certificate. I go, that certificate's worth that? And maybe it takes that long. That's why it took so long to sell. Who knows? Sorry about that. Yeah. People, I know we're a family channel, but <laughs> every once in a while they get passionate. <laughs> Next up, Mickey Mantle always sells. A 1967 Topps card SGC3, which is probably, what, good maybe in that range there. Fair to good. Um, got uh, I think I took it at 180 on this one. Um, you know, I, I bought it for around 100 bucks. It usually goes for around 200, so I'm happy with that. Now, if that were PSA three, <clears throat> would it be worth more? Not much more of that. More. Okay. Yeah, I mean, 25 bucks, maybe 10 percent more. The older stuff is almost equal with SGC now. And okay. guess who retired again? Hold on, let me think about this. Who? Tom Brady. Oh, okay. Of course, because it's February 1st, 2023. He does that every February 1st. Exactly, yeah. It should be like, He's a, like, like there's day. April 1st. It should be February 1st, Tom Brady Day. It's like Groundhog Day. Yeah. But anyways, um, probably why this sold, I don't know. I took 100 bucks on it. It was only a PSA 7. Uh, they robbed me again, but, uh, you know, you got to sell them. You got to sell them. So. Now, is that 2003? It's close as rookie, three, three years later. Three years yeah. later, okay. And again, these numbered cards, I was told you cannot crack them out and re-slab them because they're already in the system. So they'll just give you the same grade? Well, they won't They won't grade it. Really? Because it's already graded, and you can't send the same. You can ask for a regrade, but you can't crack it and send it back like it's not a regrade. Oh, wow. Yeah. What if I took a pen and crossed out the 491 and wrote 490? Then it would be altered, and you'd get a big A, worth about 30 bucks. Oh. Next up... Christmas season is around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Yeti Tradition Snow Globe. Uh, I think I got the full 73 on this. I had it on sale from 80 to 73. And I cannot argue with that, selling that in uh, February. And, and that's what that kind of ties back to what we've said all the time. Christmas does sell all year round. It, it really, truly does. doesn't mean that you shouldn't stockpile your Christmas stuff and get them listed in September, October. Mm-hmm. However... If they're part of a collection and you're just like, you know something, I'm sick of tripping over this, I just want to get it listed, it'll still sell off season. Yeah. It may not sell for quite as much, but it will sell off season. But um, unfortunately, I don't see Jim Shore in the title, do you? Uh, and that's really no, I do not. a selling point. So maybe it should have sold last February if they put Jim Shore in. So maybe remember, it, put Jim Shore in if it's Jim Shore. Maybe it sells every February like Tom Brady retiring. Exactly. <laughs> Next up, I was shocked when I saw this. I thought there was cards with this set. Uh, one of my oh. one of my employees listed this and uh, Pokemon trading card binder, nineteen ninety nine, Snorlax, Mewtwo, and so forth. It's just the binder. Wow! 40, and I have a bunch more now. So guess what we're going to be listing tomorrow? Well, and, and here's uh here's what I would think. I would think you could probably find that out there. Yeah. With <clears throat> cards in it for. Cheaper than that price, probably. With cards in it. Yeah, right. And especially if it's some dealer that has junk cards in it. 
and he may look at it, you know, well, may not even be the Pokemon. That, they may that's how be... I got it. Exactly. And I took the junk cards out or did whatever we did with them and then sold that separately, yeah. Yeah, so the dealer might look and go, why do you want these cards? I don't yeah. know, 20 bucks, and sell you the whole thing of cards for 20 bucks, and then you can double the money on the binder, and you got yeah. the cards left over. Crazy. Wow. All right. Last up for me, Ocean Drive, June 1998, Jennifer Lopez, uh, Rare Fashion Mag. Had it for two and a half years, sold it for 140 yeah, and that magazine, you, you do see that out there. I've got a few of them I've picked up as well. They're gigantic. They are yeah. large. They're like the size of like W. Or they're not quite that big, but they're thick. Yeah, they're round they're big, yeah. yeah. Um, they are out there. Uh, I usually can pick them up for 5 to 10 bucks a piece. People do people do price them higher at the fleas and that kind of thing just because they say, oh, it's got to be a good magazine. Right. It's still better than what they price it for. Oh, yeah. So Absolutely. you can make money. Yep. Um, speaking of making money. Love on the Run, Joan Crawford, Clark Gable, 1930, Syracuse, Ad Cone. Huh? What would you call this, Mr. Magazine? Mm-hmm. It is one of those things that they handed it out yeah. at the Syracuse Orange back when it was flat the Orange. Or does it open up and it opens up okay. so you can yell like this yeah. at the game, go team, rah, rah. Yeah. What would you call that? I called it a cone. I didn't really yeah, know what it, it was. Yeah, it's like a, a cheer a, cone like or a, a horn or a cheer horn. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Cheer horn, yeah. Right. I didn't really know what to call it. I just called it an ad cone, and I put it up for the $54, and it got a I mean, bids. I don't know much about this stuff, but it looks like it's in great shape, and I would think 50 bucks is a steal. I mean, look at the condition. you got Gable on there. I mean, that's crazy. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. I Good think I paid a couple of bucks for it, so I was happy yeah. selling it for yeah, 50 but yeah. Sure. Um, next up, f- worth more than this, by the way, <laughs> is, yeah, it sure is. Hanna Barbera. Buddy, in the, the conditions, right now, is nice. Uh, no, no, it's partially colored with okay. wear on corners. Oh, wow, okay. Hanna Barbera, Benny the Ball, and Spook Top Cat coloring book from 1962. Um, I always buy coloring books when I'm out there, even if they are mm-hmm. colored. A lot of people shy away from them if they're colored. Um, obviously would this be worth more if it weren't yes sure. uh, no doubt however getting 56 dollars out of this i think i paid a dollar for it at a sale mm-hmm. so i was i was happy to sell for 56 um and it was the second day of a sale so it had sat there all the first day and part way into the second day and nobody wow. cared Jeez. nobody cared about it whatsoever so find a niche like coloring books but not coloring books because that's my niche find your own <laughs> and you'll be able to uh right. make good money learned a lot from the listing bully <laughs> <laughs> yeah here i'm swearing today and everything terrible Holy card, prayer holy card, holy oh. card, prayer card, lot, Catholic, 1940s and 1990s, lot of 35 from Buffalo, New York. Got $24 out of this. How long did it take you to list it? I'm just curious. Not very long at all. I just okay. took the pictures. I didn't list, um, if you, you look down, them below, down and flipped them and all, all pictures, all pictured oh. is my little way out mm-hmm. of it. Right. So yeah, I took two pictures, the fronts and two pictures on the backs. Just like that over there. It didn't take very long at all. Yeah. But here's the beauty of this. Do you know where these, where I got these from, Mr. Magazine? Um, a dumpster? Inside religious books that oh, I bought. Okay, there you go. So I had bought a few religious books at a sale. These were sitting inside. I pulled them on out, you know, like four or five books. You know, each book had, you know, four, five, six of them, whatever. Pulled these out. I said, what am I going to do with these? Threw them all together in a lot, and I got $24 out of it. You know, when you think about it, that's 75 cents a piece. Yeah. You know. It's free money. But it is free money. Absolutely right. right. I did not buy them because they're there. And a lot of times you can find things like this sitting in religious books, and A, they never look, but B, if they did look, they see this, they're not going to charge you for this because these don't have any value to anybody. Better than a sharp stick in the eye, I was told. I would say it is. Um, Next up. Starline Barn Equipment Catalog, 1971, Agricultural Stalls, Pens, Posts, Waterers, $42 for this. Um, just a neat little catalog over here with lots of different things here for the for the farm. But catalogs sell. I mean, it's really yeah. what it comes down to. And how many of these are out there? Oh, I guess that's the other side of things. 50 years old on top of it all. So. 50 years old and... and who wanted it in the first place? Farmers, and you know there may be a bunch of them sitting out in barns out somewhere, or other than mm-hmm. somebody just saved. But you know, they're just—they're not all that common. I've never seen it before, and so I kind of priced it at forty bucks oh, and got a bid on it. So who, I was happy. Who blames you? Next up is Night Hawk Blues Foxtrot Sheet Music, nineteen twenty-four WDAF, hmm. uh, Kansas City. I was thinking, what the? You know what I'm saying? 
What the? No, that, that mm-hmm. could be that too. Sure. <laughs> Traffic and weather together. Um, this is one of those deals that I believe one of my um, New Year's resolutions was to try to learn sheet music a little bit. And this was in a pile of sheet music that I bought. And I couldn't find any examples of it, so I threw it up at auction at 68 bucks, and nobody bought it, so I put it into the store. A couple of weeks later, somebody paid full price for it. Um, sheet music is difficult because it does take a lot of research um, on things like that. And then you end up finding something like this that isn't anywhere out there. That being said, I made 68 bucks mm-hmm. off something I paid a dollar for, so that does make it worthwhile. Yeah, find a niche like, like sheet music, but not sheet music. But not sheet music, or coloring books. Listing bully. <laughs> and last, and certainly not least, Hires Root Beer, Santa Claus, 1950s die-cut toy soda fountain barrel. What would you call this, Mr. Magazine? Christmas season. <laughs> <That is silly. laughs> Christmas season, yes, things do sell all year round. Yeah. Um, this would go into the top of the six pack, no. so it's like one of the six top yeah. six pack. I don't know what you call them, toppers. Yeah. I guess maybe sure. something Sounds like good that. To me. Um, I put it up for forty eight dollars, and it got some bids, three bids on it. I ended up going for seventy six dollars. Wow! Look at the size of that. That's a lot. Four and a half by six. So it's a small little thing out there. I couldn't find any out there. I did find a larger size um, one, like almost a, not quite stand up, but a, like a counter type size one, went for 120 bucks. So I said, oh, well, the uh, smaller size got to be worth 40 bucks anyway, 40, yeah. 50 bucks. I ended up going for 76. So never know on that stuff out there. A dollar 30 for a whole barrel of soda. Yeah, right. That's crazy. And what would that barrel be worth now? <laughs> A lot more than that. A lot more than 76 bucks, I'll tell you. I would think so. Yeah. Um, so hopefully this helps you a little bit. I do apologize for my naughty word earlier. And uh, do hit the like button. Don't hold that against me. I'm sorry. We're all human. And uh, uh, we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.